What do you do when things don't turn out the way you planned? There's so much to be said about learning how to be vulnerable with yourself and really lean into your own personal feminine-centered leadership when it comes to navigating your way through challenges. I feel like I am a master at this. Over the course of my life, I've been blessed with ample opportunity to befriend myself and learn how to recognize what I need in an instant. And it's something that I'm passionate about sharing with others. One of the first things that I want to talk to you about though, when it comes to navigating our way through challenges, through grief, is that this is a really normal, natural process of our aging, yet it's not something that we're taught. I hope that we are starting to recognize there are things that we need to unlearn and become a beginner again, become a beginner in learning something new about how to develop emotional intelligence so that we can bring our presence to the moment that is trying to teach us something. I first remember having this experience when I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. And trust me, in the beginning, I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't want to surrender and accept it and then learn from it. I fought tooth and nail, firstly by pretending it wasn't happening, ignoring it. And then it became really obvious that it wasn't going to go away and I had to turn and face it. And within that though, there is a, an incredible experience of your ego cracking, which isn't pretty. The ego, which is what's controlling all of your behavior, has been built by you from your past experiences to keep you safe, to help you navigate power struggles that you witnessed as a child. So it doesn't want to be destroyed However, when you go through a dark night of the soul, when you start to have experiences occurring that normally happen around midlife, maybe they happen a little bit earlier for you like they did for me, but around midlife you had enough of these experiences to recognize them and use them as an opportunity for some deep self-healing and growth. So. First thing I want to say to you is that when this happens for you, when, when shit hits the fan, things go pear-shaped or things just don't work out the way that you thought they would. In that is an opportunity for you to recognize the conditioning you have placed on yourself to feeling good. You may have heard yourself or others say, if only so-and-so would behave a certain way, then I would feel better. Or if I only got that job, then everything would be fine or any, any of the above. This is a conditional way of living, which you cannot win at. You will never ever win, and win is a dumb word to use, but you will never ever feel true happiness and contentedness if you're constantly seeking outside validation for you to feel good. Feeling good is your natural birthright. And in fact, let's remove the word good and bad. Feeling in your body, feeling happiness, feeling joy is your birthright, despite external appearances. Having experiences that are really intense or can or that negatively affect your experience of living is how we grow. This is a part of our humanness, a part of our, our our human experience of life. Suffering is a part of our human experience. It's a fallacy to think that by thinking only good thoughts, nothing bad will ever happen because it's meant to happen. This is how you grow. If you only ever have quote unquote good things happen, how do you ever measure how good something is or how much joy you can have? It's always going to be, it ended up becoming very vanilla. In my opinion, with the training that I've done through my meditation, my yoga training, and my own personal school of life, 
It's when you are struck by a sudden news, such as the death of a loved one, the diagnosis of ill health, not getting the job you wanted, a relationship breaking down. These are the most opportune times for you to grow as a human being. And without sounding morbid, morbid, it really is an opportunity for you to become a better version of yourself by learning how to be present with your own emotions, <laughs> learning how to bring deep, authentic compassion to yourself and the situation at hand and those that you're with. At the end of the day, we are all walking each other home. What matters most is how well did you live? How well did you love? And how well did you learn to let go? So I want to give you some of the notes I've taken about what I think it means to be a true leader of your own life. And this is deeply centered in feminine centered leadership. So really reclaiming our capacity for softness, which is vastly different from a overtly masculine way of being in the world, which is the way we've been up until now. It's all that we've really learned. Yet most of you would have felt the injustice of that in the way that the world has been governed, the way that we've cared for the earth and we've cared for each other who are less fortunate than us. So the first thing that I want to suggest, I've written down my notes, so excuse me if I glance down, but I want to give you this information. And please see this as a, a transmission of energy from me to you. So if you're multitasking, if you're multitasking, I'm going to ask that you stop for a moment and just give me your presence. All of your life's experiences and challenges to date Add a depth and a richness to your present moment. This comes by you giving yourself the opportunity to take the wisdom of whatever's happened in your past and use it as an opportunity for you to bring that richness to your present moment. So letting go of the who said, what they did, don't own any of it. Only take what is the wisdom for you. What did you learn? What did that experience teach you? The next thing I want to give you are a series of steps that I've taken, which will lead you to something that is quite profound. So please stay to the end. I want to share with you this real perla, which will bring it all home. I want you to firstly lean into the power of your feminine energy to develop a deeper sense of compassion for yourself. For me, that happened when I went through an early menopause. Excuse me while I have a drink. At the time in my life when I was ready to have a child. Now there was a lot of self-comparison there, a lot of anger at past decisions that I had made. I had to consciously be compassionate with myself and this meant recognizing when I was berating myself recognizing when I was blaming or rehashing situations and bringing my compassion to myself the same way that I would care for a very dear loved one of mine who was going through that I invite you to explore that I'm going to give you a little practice with it Bring your hands together in prayer and bring your thumbs to in your heart. This is called Anjali Mudra. Soften down the vowel of your eyes and then separate your hands slightly. And I want you to imagine inside your hands is a tiny little bird, a baby bird. This gentle little creature, tiny, vulnerable to life. Feel the softness in your hands and the way that you care for this tiny little creature. And then feel that same sense of compassion and tenderness pouring from your thumbs into your own heart. That's that level of compassion and tenderness. You have the capacity to give yourself. 
allow your eyes to open come back into the space with me the next thing I want you to do is to give yourself permission to express your feelings you can do this by intentionally creating a safe space for yourself to express your vulnerability to feel vulnerable with yourself this might mean that you go to your room your bedroom and if you haven't already bring in a pillow bring in a candle maybe you need to open the windows up and let the light in um, I have found great pleasure in closing the blinds and lighting candles and having soft things around me that I can cuddle up with and cry into or it might be that you grab a pillow and you scream into the pillow maybe you take yourself out into nature like the John Forest National Park is somewhere where I've gone repeatedly in my past found a quiet area and taken up rocks and stones and thrown them into the water while screaming whatever it was I wanted to let go of however you can express your emotions maybe you go and punch a punchy bag it needs to come up and out of you your emotions are energy in motion and when they move through you you no longer own them um, this opens you up to such a deep sense of trust and intuition with yourself it opens up intimacy it opens up this intimate space where you can be real and vulnerable with yourself there's no more facade there's no more pretending that you've got it all together i like to use the word armor up so de-armor yourself with yourself you'll find that when you can de-armor yourself to yourself you're no longer hiding from yourself and this is how you heal you need to feel it to heal it the next one i want you to do is to prioritize your self-care you can do this by speaking up for your needs and honoring your boundaries if you if you find that being around others is too much your inner self wants you to be on your own you need to speak up because caring people may want to give more to you in that time when all you really want is space and if you don't speak up about it you won't get it so honoring your boundaries honoring when you've had enough learning how to not answer the phone learning how to answer the phone to someone who's asking if you're okay this will come from the more you trust yourself and your intuition which is in the previous things that i shared with you the other one i want you to really do is pay attention to your intuition and document and journal um, how you're feeling document what foods you want to eat what are you being drawn to do you need to is your body calling you to go to your favorite park quite often Hyde Park is my favorite park and I have spent a lot of time healing here when my father passed away I, all I could do was come here and lay flat on my back and get down on the earth because I felt like I was free falling and if I got down on the earth there was nowhere else for me to fall that was it I was on the ground and that felt safe so follow your intuition and let yourself be led by that where do you need to go the, six, the next thing I want to bring up for you is asking for help there is no shame for asking for help you in times when when things go pear-shaped and life hasn't worked out the way that you thought it would and you are suffering there will come a time when leaning on your tribe and allowing them in is what's going to help you recover healing doesn't happen in isolation it happens in partnership it happens in union learning how to receive is a deeply feminine art these are things that I teach you inside my program called nourished which is my 12-week mentorship program and I support you through learning how to receive from yourself so that you can receive from others but there's there's plenty of work online that you can you can lean into if you want one-on-one -on -one guidance you're welcome to reach out and ask me booking for a discovery call they're completely free and it gives us a chance to feel into our vibe the next is a practicing letting go of the attachment of how things are supposed to look so it might be that I'll use myself as an example I thought that when I got married at 42 um, I was still menstruating at the time I would fall pregnant really quickly and that I would have a child in two years time I would have a two-year-old the reason I know that's because I found a journal that I kept during that time recently and the journal was projecting forward five years 
and in it I wrote I would return back to Perth with my son and um, we would we would all be a surfing family together you know I had to take a moment at that time that when I read that to really feel my body and and the ouch the ouch with that and be compassionate with myself when you let go of the attachment of how things are supposed to look there is this beautiful quote that I want to share with you and it's when we let go we let God which asks an incredible amount of trust in yourself and in the process of life because something something different something better something more aligned to your life's purpose is wanting to be born this is why it's so incredibly important excuse me that we practice things like meditation earlier we practice meditation before the proverbial hits the fan <coughs> it helps us to identify what is real not the conditional living the house the car the job the relationship but what is real and this is your character this is who you really are your soul's purpose for being here what is your true life's mission on this earth and it's return to your humanness it's to return to this sense of our collective tribe of caring for one another it's a it's a feminine way of leading ourselves and of of leading leading in in our lives <coughs> leading in our community these summaries lead us up to one point that i want to bring home excuse me one second There will come a time where you'll be able to sit with yourself and ask, what is this teaching me? How is this benefiting me? <coughs> and I know that might seem really hard to think of when someone close to you has passed away or you've been diagnosed with a serious illness. Coming from someone who has done it, I didn't do it straight away. But it comes with time and it gives you an opportunity to disassociate from the egoic way of thinking to develop a sense of surrender is like how about what am I learning how am I growing if that's landed for you if there's a nugget inside what I've just shared please drop it in the comments below I'd love to hear from you be well and I'll talk to you soon bye